So lately I've been watching stay-at-home moms deep clean their houses on YouTube. Hello, and welcome to the second in my series that I am deciding to call Feminist Findings, in which I, a self-proclaimed raging intersectional feminist, examine cultural phenomena through a feminist lens to see what I can find out. Today the lenses are um, my new glasses, which are so tight I can actually feel my life force being squeezed out the sides of my head, so... <laughs> And since the comments on my first feminist video were so fun, I just couldn't wait to make another one. <laughs> Today I will be talking about the monetization of mommyhood, in which mothers, usually squeaky clean, good Christian women, are monetizing their brand, the complex world of momfluencers on different platforms, and what I, a childless pole dancer, have to think about it all. A few housekeeping <laughs> points to kick us off here. I'm not going to talk about family channels here because those are a completely different beast and they are just honestly so weird. Although my personal take on them is like, I don't even know why anyone would engage with family channel content. And I'm also very concerned about the idea of children whose lives have been documented on YouTube since the actual second that they came out of the womb. And why are we filming kids' most vulnerable moments and using that as content? Anyway, there's a lot going on with family channels and people who are funnier and more educated than me have talked about them all already. Which is why I specifically want to focus on the moms. Instead of looking at the whole family element, I want to look at their role in the family dynamic. The people who are mothers and became creators, thus meshing their two worlds together. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about gender roles and stuff here, so I just wanna briefly remind us all that being a mom does not mean you are a cisgender woman, marriage is not always one man and one woman, and not every family includes two parents. Okay, if we look at almost all of human history, almost everywhere, um, women have been the ones to take care of children and the home, although we are beginning to see a societal shift. A lot of these women have done so by becoming stay-at-home moms. And you may think that I, and everything that I am, am against the very concept of being a stay-at-home mom, that I think it represents the death of the feminist dream to shake free of the bonds of patriarchy. But you would be wrong. I fully support becoming a stay-at-home mom if that's what makes you happy, if that's what works for you and your family, and if it's a viable option for you. The beauty of feminism, as I always say, is that it's about choice, not about doing what you think is gonna please the ghost of Susan B. Anthony or some shit. <laughs> I'm reminded of a classic Lisa Simpson quote. Well, as a feminist, virtually anything a woman does is empowering. Okay, housekeeping done. Let's get into the vegetarian meat of this video essay then. And yes, we are going to be talking about capitalism. I'm gonna be honest here, when I first started scripting this video, I was only going to focus on my favorite house cleaning mommies on YouTube, <laughs> and I'll talk about them later. But as I dove deeper, I realized I would be remiss if I did not mention Instagram momfluencers. Yes, uh, momfluencer, you're gonna hear that word a lot here. And uh, why didn't I think about the Instagram momfluencers? Because I don't engage with their content. I myself only follow a couple people who have kids and none of them post the classic momfluencer stuff like, oh my goodness, today Braxtelin knocked over our vegan artisanal lamp, but I reminded him he's my spirit animal and then we all stopped crying. That may be an ungenerous exaggeration. <laughs> Anyway, since I'm not a mom, nor am I planning on becoming one, I found some articles written by real moms who had some things to say about picture-perfect momfluencers on Instagram. A Harper's Bazaar article called Momfluencer Content Enrages Me, Why Can't I Look Away, written by Sarah Peterson, reads, Why do I consume content that I know portrays an idealized fantasy of motherhood at odds with a lived experience of motherhood? Jory Lagerway, head of film studies at University College Dublin, cites literary critic Lauren Berlant's concept of cruel optimism to explain, when you see a pattern like these unbelievably perfect moms over and over, you expect that pattern. You expect to see it unfold in your own life and you aspire to it even though you know it's bad for you. So it's optimistic in that it's an aspiration, but it's cruel in that what you want either doesn't actually exist or does exist, but is actively harmful to you. Another article, written by Joe Piazza for Philly Mag, details the author's attempts to become a momfluencer on Instagram, stating that she thought it sounded easy and like a great way to rake in the cash. More on both of those later. She tried to corral her children into expensive photo shoots, scolding them when they acted up or messed up the shot. She stressed about trying to secure sponsorships, and she lost some of her real-life friends during her time as an Insta-celeb. As Piazza writes, 
As I strove to be a more perfect mother online, I became an even worse mother offline. I never put my phone down. I was snappy with my kids. My little boy started screaming, no photos, whenever I approached. One day, my little girl reached out a little hand to snag a cupcake I'd artfully slaved over. Stop, I yelled. I have to take a picture first. Slight tangent, if you are a fan of thriller books and you want to read a fictionalized account of a momfluencer who gets into a dangerous situation, I recommend the book People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. It was a fun read. Piazza ultimately concluded that she didn't want her children to suffer so that she could make herself into a brand. And it's not just the story behind creating the post that reveals the dark underbelly of momfluencing on Instagram, but what the posts are conveying as well. Specifically referencing those momfluencers whose aesthetic is very 50s housewife caters to the husband, Sarah Peterson's article in Harper's Bazaar says, Associate Professor of Media and Communication Elizabeth Nathanson worries that passive consumption of imagery, which celebrates an idyllic past that never actually existed for any women and was completely antithetical to the experience of marginalized women, can be harmful because such imagery presents motherhood free from the blight of capitalism. In her article, Peterson is trying to figure out why she, a mom who struggles to wrangle her kids and who fully admits to being an imperfect mother, is so drawn in by these momfluencers who seem to have it all. And that's just it, the having it all of it all. Imagine this. Actually, apparently like 91% of you don't have to imagine, <laughs> but imagine this. You're a woman or you've been socialized as female. You're supposed to want to have kids. You're supposed to want to get married, but not in that order, you heathen. And you're supposed to want to marry a man. You're supposed to be thin and pretty during it all. Well, also keeping track of all your kids' activities, pleasing your husband, putting a hot meal on the table every night, keeping the house clean, and maintaining interests of your own. If you're an Instagram momfluencer, that's also your brand, and therefore your empire, shown off at least once a day in filtered little squares. Momfluencing on Instagram seems to be pretty different from momfluencing on YouTube because on Instagram it's just short, perfect little snippets. Momfluencing on YouTube seems to be more about the day-to-day -day life, the mundane, the routine. I mean, it's a lot harder to hide a real mess when you're showing a three minute long panning shot of your entire downstairs than when you're just taking a single vertical photo for your Instagram feed. And maybe it's just my little monkey brain that is convincing me that these moms on YouTube are like my pals because their videos are so long and there's no way that they could be omitting things or over glamorizing their lives. Not like those Instagram momfluencers, right? <laughs> Let's transition to talking about the moms who originally inspired this video, the YouTube moms. There is a portion of the internet devoted to clean the house with me videos made by moms and I unabashedly love it. <laughs> People tell me all the time that I have OCD, which first of all is rude, and second of all might explain why I'm so drawn in by videos like this and why a lot of people like me, who aren't moms, watch them. We want to see messes cleaned up. We need to turn off our brains for half an hour and it's either going to be watching that Markiplier video for the 18th time or watching someone clean their house. And I feel like I have watched this woman clean her kitchen more times than I have cleaned my own kitchen and I don't get tired of it. I mean, if we separate the momminess from it all, it's just extremely satisfying to watch something that was dirty or cluttered become clean, and it inspires me to clean too. But then again, can we separate the momminess from it all? These messes are caused by children and husbands and family activities, the family just living their lives, and the mom is the one who's cleaning it up. With the exception of that one YouTuber who cleans her severely depressed followers' homes, almost every single one of these Clean With Me videos is made by a mom. I attempted to find a video made by a dad, and here's how that went. I couldn't find one. I scrolled for almost a minute, and I stopped at an account that was named Daniel something, but that just happened to be a repost of a Merry Maids training video. So it appears that it is only women making this kind of content. Why? Because dads don't clean their homes? Because men wouldn't film themselves washing dishes? Because men aren't engaging with this kind of content? I genuinely don't know, so I'd love to hear what you think. And yeah, oh my gosh, I get really salty when I feel like the mom's families are not helping them out enough. They'll be like, I'm folding my husband's shirts today, and I'm like, why can't he do it? He's a grown man. And then they'll show a shot of their husband helping with something and I'm like, fine, I guess he can stay a little longer. <laughs> These moms seem to be establishing pretty tight-knit communities with their videos and it got me thinking. Is this the modern day equivalent to old-timey female camaraderie? Like, 
borrowing a cup of sugar from each other, or hosting Tupperware parties, or sharing recipe cards? When this YouTube mom instructs me to use baking soda to freshen up a mattress, is she continuing the time-honored tradition of women passing their knowledge to each other down through the generations? Maybe it's all for show, and it probably is mostly for show, um, but all the momfluencers seem to be friends with one another, and I'm always screaming about how important it is to build up other women and form communities with women. Sure, my community might be made almost entirely of strippers instead of stay-at-home moms, but community is community. And you might be thinking that I am speaking a little too positively about momfluencers, because like I mentioned before, there is a dark side to it, but here's what draws me in so much about them, for better or worse. They are taking advantage of the system of capitalism to profit from their situation. Emotional labor, upkeep of the home, mothering, and otherwise feminine tasks have long been unpaid and underappreciated. Yeah, 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 we could debate all day about the ethicality of the influencer economy for sure, but we are undeniably in an influencer economy, which allows people to monetize themselves. So why can't moms be part of that? Joe Piazza's article echoes my point. It seemed like an excellent side hustle, a scam almost. I have to be a mother anyway. My children don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Why not take some pictures and get paid for it? Since you're already a mother, already expected to maintain the home, already expected to have it all while doing so, why not turn that into an empire? Piazza's article continues. Liz Lenz, one of our most astute social commentators and writers on motherhood, put it to me best. Mom influencers are essentially profiting off the unpaid labor of motherhood. The expectations on women are just out of control, Lenz told me. We're doing three hours more childcare a week compared to moms in the 1970s, and we're also working more. So no wonder women break and say, you know what, peace out on this. I'm gonna take my kids to the park, take a couple pictures of it, and earn some money that way. A woman who can make money, who can innovate and find a way to make money, gets power and gets freedom. I want to mention something here, and this isn't in my original script, and I've tried to say this like five times now and it's not coming out right, um, so I hope that this makes sense, but I feel like that quote sort of ignores some of the intersectionalities at play here, which is like, yes, women are expected to work more in and out of the home in this wonderful late stage capitalism that we live in but it gets more difficult and complicated if you are a single mother if you're queer or disabled or a woman of color it depends on what your job or jobs are outside of the home there's a lot more to it than just like oh women get a little fed up and decide they're gonna momfluence i just wanted to make sure that i mentioned that because i feel like a lot of the time when we're talking about momfluencers we are talking about the top momfluencers and not looking at the people on the margins or the people to whom this world is completely inaccessible. Back to the script. <laughs> Momfluencers on YouTube are often sponsored by cleaning products. I just watched a video that had a three minute long segment about a smart vacuum that tucks itself back into its little charging port when it can feel that it's running low on battery. <laughs> and I think that this is honestly so brilliant. Like, if you're gonna be cleaning your house anyway and using a ton of cleaning products, why not get a sponsorship, get free samples, get paid? What is this? <laughs> and I'm sure momfluencers on Instagram are also sponsored by cleaning products or diaper brands or similar things like that. I'm just, again, less familiar with them. But what I do know is that this stuff is not easy, whether you are creating a single snapshot or a long video or, in fact, just existing as a mom. To quote Sarah Peterson's article again, Momfluencers are savvy businesswomen, skilled artisans, and expert content creators. I know you know this, but being a stay-at-home mom does not mean hanging out at home all day watching YouTube like some Kelsey's I know. <laughs> And even when you are alone, you are not alone. You are accompanied by your never-ending to-do list or that pile of laundry or the groceries that you need to put away. And now, on top of that, if you're a momfluencer, you've got the business of being a creator. I just film and edit my little content on my little phone and that can take hours on top of hours. These moms are setting up their equipment and filming to get the perfect shot all over their house. They are securing their sponsorships, combing through hours of footage and editing it, recording voiceovers, shouting out the brands in their description box, and in a lot of cases, going through and responding to almost every single comment. And they're not just doing this on YouTube, they're also doing it on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or whatever other platforms they're using. It is a hell of a lot of work with a hell of a lot of skills involved. And yes, depending upon which platform you're posting on, it can be a more or less realistic look at a mom's life, more or less insidious. And yes, it's also selling us the idea of motherhood as a product, one that is easiest to get if you are thin and pretty and on top of everything and also using their sponsored stuff. It's complicated. 
As Sarah Peterson puts it, all mothers exist within a capitalist system that sells us the idea of motherhood itself before going on to sell us all the props that go along with the job. If momfluencers weren't selling me this or that product, someone else would. At least in this scenario, fellow mothers are reaping the benefits of a system that assures mothers we will always need to be something else, buy something else. Okay, I am not a mom, so I have a great distance from all of this, but I did want to try my hand at making a clean the house with me video, so uh, here's how that went. Okay, so to start off, I put my camera in the hallway to film me carrying the load of laundry, and then I had to sneak past it and <laughs> turn it around to get the right angle, and already I'm like hyper-conscious of what I'm doing with my body and distracted from the task at hand. I'm like, why do I hold my hand like that? Why do I look like that when I'm bending over or whatever? And then I tried to get a good shot of this bathroom, but it is so small and narrow that I could only go from the outside looking in, which is why this shot is <laughs> terrible. And I'm already thinking like how tough it must be for mom influencers who film themselves cleaning because I feel like nothing is more annoying than someone who's not helping you clean having an opinion on how you're cleaning. Like if somebody commented, oh, you didn't spray enough of the cleaning solution or like, oh, I can't believe you scrub this way, I would be so annoyed. Back to the laundry room to move the towels from the washer to the dryer, and I'm like getting bored watching myself do this. Maybe it's because I, I just did it an hour ago, but it's so funny because I watch this kind of content all the time, but watching myself do it, I'm like, yawn, what else is on? Anyway, a cursed time lapse of me moving everything out of the bathroom, and then this shot I got by standing in the tub and setting up my tripod on the side of the bath, so yeah. It's hard trying to get a good angle of yourself cleaning things. And you'll see this isn't even that great of an angle. You can't really see the sink that's in the front, so I did cut out a lot of me scrubbing that because you couldn't see it anyway. I'm sure that stay-at-home moms who do this like three times a week for YouTube no longer have this problem, but I could feel myself rushing to get through the task instead of doing it properly because I was like so conscious of being recorded. I'm like, oh man, I don't want this footage to be 45 minutes long, so I better scrub pretty quick here. <laughs> um, so I probably did a poorer job cleaning than I normally would because I was trying to show you my cleaning job. You know that old joke that's like, oh, the maid's coming, so we better clean today. I was thinking about that while I was filming this. I was like, I don't actually want you to see how dirty I let my bathroom get because I don't want you to think that I'm gross, even though this is a cleaning video in which I am making the bathroom clean. <laughs> I'm like, okay, why am I embarrassed to have a mess if I'm cleaning it? Anyway, it's also hard to find a good angle of yourself when you're cleaning. This is obviously very ass-centric, and though I am a pole dancer, I was not comfortable with this. This is me debating if I should show you a toilet and then deciding that it's gross. And then this is me trying to do a snap transition and remembering that I did not film the first part of the snap transition. So it is just kind of pointless. Okay, thanks, bye. To conclude, let me quote Sarah Peterson again, and this time she's referencing Joe Piazza, the other person I've been quoting this entire time. Piazza praises momfluencers for figuring out how to monetize the unpaid labor of motherhood, and I do too, full stop. I'm still bothered, though, that the particular flavor sold by the most successful momfluencers is one conceived by patriarchy, a beautiful mother made happy by her beautiful children in her beautiful home. So is stay-at-home motherhood empowering? Yes. Is momfluencing empowering? Sometimes. Is taking advantage of your role in the capitalist hellscape empowering? Sometimes. <laughs> but what do you think? Do you watch any videos of any stay-at-home moms tending to their children or their husbands? <laughs> Do you follow any momfluencers on Instagram or any other platforms? Are you a mother or a mother-to-be? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!